Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Star Ocean. Last time we finished up our business in Sylvalence and uh, got the approval of the king there. We also picked up Millie, which is of course helpful. And I have arranged myself a new party. Uh, in between the uh, last episode and this one, I went through the battle arena with fear up to the same point that uh, both Iria and uh, Radix were. I believe that was the third one in. Uh, so she's gained a few levels, done all that. Uh, basically, all I did with her is use her normal attack. At this point, she's so powerful, and because of her range, she can basically take out anyone and anything very easily. Uh, so that's uh, how I've done there. I haven't done anyone else because uh, I really do need to show off kind of how I'm going to go about using them. I'm not going to show off every single round with every character because that would just take too long, but for now, uh, let's uh, show off a little bit more. Now, I'm actually going to leave Radix alone for now. The main reason why I'm here is I want to pick up more trumpets because trumpets sell for a lot and I'm short on money. The reason why I'm short on money is because I bought new gear. And the main reason why I want more money is so I can use it to spend on item creation so I can get better gear. You see the problem here. Anyway, so let's uh, let's show off Marvel. I'm just going to show off the, uh, the first round with her real quick. Um, she doesn't have any skills at this point. I don't think I've changed her gear much. Uh, any of the things I mentioned when we were in Sylvalent. Uh, that I picked up. I obviously have picked up and equipped on said people. Um, I think she got a holy cloak and that's about it. She doesn't have much as in terms of gear right now. She has no skills uh, so it's not a really good uh, way of showing her off but she has that orb spinning around her there and she uses it to attack very very close range which makes her normal attack not particularly useful, but you won't be using her normal attack once you learn one of her skills, because her skills are quite nice, and they all hit from a distance, and they're all pretty cheap, and they all have quite a small cooldown time. So, yeah, she'll be quite useful later on, but for now, basically, use normal attacks, go through. There isn't really much else you can do. Uh, she's high enough level even when you get her, that you should be able to run through the first three matches without too much of a problem. Um, maybe you'll get a bit of an issue going with uh, the boss of the second round because he can petrify you. You could equip, equip the, uh, what is it, the stone check or the stone amulet or whatever the petrification protection item is that we have access to. It is only 70%, so it's not perfect, but uh, it's better than nothing. And so I'll probably be using that uh, once we get to that one. I'll be doing that one off screen because basically I'm, you know, if I get petrified, I'll just have to redo the whole thing. And I really don't... What is that sound? Audio glitch! Yeah, and I don't really need to show off me doing the same thing over and over again with every individual character. I just want to give some amount of strategy that is useful for some characters and just kind of show them off because I haven't even shown off Marvel yet. Uh, one thing of note is, uh, well, I can't really do much of it here. I find it surprising that she is surprised by the fact that she won. But yeah, she she's pretty good. One of the better um, fighters in the game. Uh, some people may consider her, you know, like number two. Uh, some people consider Fear number two. There's actually somebody else I think is number two, which is why I'm not going to be doing any more with Radix in this uh, tournament for quite some time. Though I do want to pick up a few things while I'm here, and not just trumpets. So, we'll see what we can do here. Alright, so with that being said, the one thing I did want to note... I'm fast forward because that'll take too long. One thing I wanted to note is with Marvel, I spent some skill points. I put two into effort, one into patience, one into perseverance just to get her training. I did the same thing with Renixis just so that he would have it. And I, of course, turned it on, level one, so that uh, they would gain more experience by going through the battle arena so they could gain a couple of levels here and there. Uh, as you can see, the uh, 
Marvel and Runix just came with the same amount of experience. She only gained about a thousand for the first round. She will gain a lot more as time goes by. Anyway, I'm going, to, well, yeah, I'll, I might as well just go off screen. I'll do the uh, first, or the next two rounds with Marvel, which shouldn't be all that difficult, and I will see you in a moment. Okay, I'm back. Uh, pretty much, uh, I had a very easy time with Marvel. She has a for whatever reason right now, her normal attack seems to have a very high chance of stunning the enemy with uh, the stars above their heads so they don't do anything, which makes even fighting someone who can petrify you very, very simple. Uh, but yeah, she gained a level from that. As you can see, you know, having training on is very effective with that. So now let's show off uh, the first round with Ronixus. I probably should have shown off, say, the final round uh, instead of the first round because the first round is pretty easy, but I can pretty much demonstrate any kind of strategy that I will be using regardless of who or you know what enemies I'm facing whether they died one hit or 20 um, you know obviously if they're taking 20 hits then you're a little too uh, weak to uh, be going through there unless that's like the boss of the round anyway let's uh, let's go through this one as you recall, Ronixus attacks with a bow. He also has access to spells, which... There we go. Yeah, he's got pretty much the spells we saw of him from before. Wounds is a dark elemental. Pretty much all of these are pretty self-explanatory. Thunder, shadow, eruptions, fire, earth, wind, earth, fire. Yeah, he's not a red mage. He is a straight-up black mage. But his bow attacks really quickly. So even if you have to attack multiple times, just basically spam normal attack. He takes the battle arena in a very similar manner to Fear, and I didn't show off uh, what Fear did because, well, we've all seen Fear in battle. We know how abusive she can be and how fast she's going to take down a lot of enemies. So, yeah, I just wanted to show off quickly what I'm going to do with Renixis here. He's going to go and do the uh, next couple of rounds off screen as well but basically just spam his normal attack if you run into any issues you can use say the thunderbolt skill to uh take down some enemies if you know you're having you know i guess issues hitting them or something like that i don't think i've ever seen him miss with this bow anyway but yeah spells aren't really the best method of going about the battle arena. Which makes Joshua's trip through here, and later Millie's, quite uh, ineffective. Now, if you're wondering about, uh, you know, I have one more slot left for a final uh, character. There are two more characters available. We've, are, of course, already missed out on uh, uh, C.S. and Ashley. They are unavailable at this point. But there are two more optional characters we could recruit. Now, I'm going to recruit one just to show off a couple little things, and then I'm going to ditch that character and recruit the other one, because I find the other one is much, much better. But, uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. I have quite a few other things to do first. Okay. Let's just go through this real quick. Go through some fast forward, because I'm tired of waiting. And so, yeah, I'm going to go through and do Ronixus's next couple of uh, rounds, and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Now, I finished up uh, all of Ronixus's up to uh, the third one there. I think it's F, if I'm not mistaken. And I did the first two for Joshua off-screen, because I kind of want to show off how he takes through the, uh, the tournament there. But... In order to do that, it really makes more sense to attack enemies that he can't kill with normal attacks nearly as easily. Uh, right now, anyone who really goes through there in my party other than Millie will take zero damage from most of the enemies up to the end of the third uh, series there. So, what I'm going to do with Joshua to make things a little easier is I'm going to go into his skills. And he's got some extra skill points I can make use of. What I want to do is I want to use Motor Mouth as you can see, allows you to instantly complete the cast of a spell. Now, what I think this does is either upping this skill increases the chance of it happening instantly, or it just increases the speed at which he can cast spells in general. I'm not exactly sure, but if you'll notice, as a mage, he has a different uh, set of skills compared to most of the other characters. Uh, 
Runexus also has that one, as do all the other mages. But of course, you know, they don't have all of the Link Combo, Faint, Flip, Below the Belt, um, and, you know, all of these other different things. They also don't have a school style, which is kind of weird. Not that they would really have any use for it, but uh, I guess it could lower the MP cost of some of their spells. I don't know. But yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, up to level 5 into Motormouth, because I really I'm not going to use him for too much extra stuff, and the rest of the points I'll put into these guys later. Uh, I'm going to balance everyone out at some point in the near future. But uh, yeah, with uh, that being said, let's uh, enter into the uh, third round here with Joshua, and I'll kind of show you how to take a mage through the battle arena. Now, unfortunately for Millie, she doesn't... I think she has, like, one attacking spell in the entire game, and it still sucks. It'll do, like, you know, under 100 damage. It is so pointless. Let's fast forward there. All right, hurry up. So when Millie eventually gets in here, she's going to have a hell of a time. She's basically going to be stuck using normal attacks and nothing else. If that's the case, I have a way of helping her out, but basically she'll be doing this over and over again. Yeah. They don't attack very fast, the mages, with their rods, but uh, that's pretty much the only reason to ever buy a new rod, is to help them in the battle arena, and that's it. So... That being said, the way you really want to deal with it with, you know, Joshua, because he does have some attack spells, is to teach him the spell, or the uh, motor mouth ability, and then just spam Ray. As you can see, the amount of time he takes to actually cast it now is drastically reduced, and uh, yeah, it makes it a lot easier to go through here, specifically when we get to some of the more powerful ones that you can't kill in like three or four hits with a normal attack as weak as his. So, yeah, just spam this. I have to do it again because they have a little too much HP, but not bad. Still does 1,000 damage for, like, 8 MP. Really nice spell at this point. Uh, it will start to degrade, well, not now, but toward the end of the game it will. And, of course, this enemy is weaker than Sin, so I'm not worried about... Uh, fighting this guy, I can take him out with one normal attack. Why is this enemy in here? Oh, it's funny. Alright, final battle. Fight! Yeah, this guy, he's got a bit of an issue. So, yeah, you want to use Ray on this guy because normal attacks are going to take way too long. And luckily, uh, Joshua is actually taking zero damage from him, which means his spells aren't going to get interrupted, which is pretty much the only way to take Joshua through here. Unfortunately for Millie, like I said, she doesn't have access to any spells that can damage, so she'll be spending the entirety of her time just using normal attacks, so you have to find a way of increasing her physical damage. And there are very few ways of actually doing that. So... I got a reverse doll. Not bad, not bad. Uh, there is pretty much, you know, there's the Might Potion, which we bought before, and there's also the accessory Tri Emblem, which increases your attack by 200. It's pretty much the only way you can increase the uh, physical damage of your mages other than gear, which, you know, their best rod has 800 damage on it. Woo! Anyway, with that being said, I've completed the first three rounds with the characters that I have, and I don't really want to send Radix any further through there for now, because I have, well, some other plans first. So that means, if I recall here, uh, let's see if I can find it now. We have some more silver idols we can sell. I got saxophone. Huh. Normally you get trumpets. Okay, that's different. I hope those sell for the same amount, otherwise I'm in trouble. But, uh, yeah. So you can also get trumpets or saxophones. I think you can get some other different instruments as well. 
Where are my trumpets? Yeah, I got three trumpets. So I think I picked up one trumpet through all the people I've used. Uh, what else did I get that was interesting? Silver idols. I probably would have gotten some other kind of idol on the second round, though I have no idea what one it would happen to be at this point. Mm. Ah, screw it, doesn't matter. So, with that being said, I've done enough that I can pick up some money. And to make use of this money, I need to head back to Ionis. So I will meet you guys over there. And we're back. So yeah, just like I was saying a couple of episodes ago, now that we have access to the boat in full, we uh, can just go all the way back to the... Oh, what's the town before Chattery? Oh, geez. Um, I can't remember. Anyway, you just head right back to the previous town, then take the boat to Ekdart, and run over to Ionis, and you're there. Doesn't take more than, you know, five minutes. Um, you know, item, or, uh, not item creation, uh, whatever that is, um, battle's not, uh, you know, to the side, depending on how long they take. Anyway. In order to finally take the first step into item creation, I want to first choose Iria because she has the writing innate ability. Now, writing is right over here. This is the first one you want to learn, and I will explain why in a moment. But yeah, for her to max it, you just basically spam it once you've done effort, and it really doesn't take that much to finish off. I think it's about 150-ish. Uh, something like that, 120, whatever it is, and done. So we've maxed that one out for Iria. Of course, make sure your character that you're maxing it out on actually has uh, the writing ability. It's very important. And we need to find out what we can do with that. And since this is the town of item creation, they're going to have exactly what we need. Uh, I believe it was research pen. There we go. Unfortunately, the 20 item limit really starts to piss people off around this point in the game. Item creation really, really requires you to be able to hold more than 20 of an item, especially in this game, but really in all Star Ocean games, because in every one, whenever you're trying to do item creation, half of that involves making money to do more item creation. So we're first going to start by just doing the research pens. Um, I also want to sell uh some of my trumpets if i can find them there they are uh keep one of course sell two of those and what's the sack sell for and eh, it even sells for a little more not bad so i'll sell two of those and where else i had a few other things i could sell where did they go where did they go did i go past it already probably silver idol oh I thought those sold for more. Now, ah, well, they're useless anyway, so I'll sell that. And I will settle up there. Now I've got over 360,000. Should have more than enough to do what I want to do. Now, this is very important. Um, basically, this is going to save you a shit ton of time. So we have the items we need. Now, what you want to do for item creation is go into the item menu, hit the, uh, what's that, the X button, top one. Yes, that's the X button on Super Nintendo controller. I'm using a PS2 controller, it's triangle, so. Anyway, select down, go to item creation. We have access to one, authoring. Now, the way that this works is you author a book based on uh, something that you've already learned so you can teach somebody a skill level. Now, this works very similar to well, exactly the same as the music encyclopedia items that we got through doing the battle arena. We got these alongside our trumpets or saxes. So what you do is just select it and you teach somebody a skill. So let's go like that. And we just taught him one skill in music encyclopedia, which I think is, let's just take a look here real quick. Yeah, it's this one. So we saved ourselves one skill point there. Not so much at the beginning, but you can use these to gain up to seven levels of pretty much any, not every skill, but any skill that it's 
available to do. And the only way they'll show up is if Iria has actually learned, or whoever your writer is, has learned at least one of those skills. So right now we have just those two. And if I say wanted to give her the musical notation book, or the musical encyclopedia, she would learn musical notation. However, because the oops, because the game doesn't save your um, cursor location, say if I want to go make a writing book, I'll go right here, and you have a chance of it working or not. She created a book of grammar, which is good. However, it goes back to the initial one. So it's going to take a lot of time to have to press the button over every single time you want to do this, because you're going to want to get seven for each of your characters. And at the end, we're going to have eight characters, seven times eight, 56. 56 times you have to do that if you have 100% um, uh, creation rate, which you won't. So yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one and do all of the, uh, the kitchen knife ones. Then I'm going to teach her another skill in the skill menu, and then she's going to be able to do that one. Uh, where are you, Iria? So I actually have a list of where they're going to appear in the uh, menu for um, for writing. So what you want to do, and I'm assuming this works, I just kind of looked at it after the fact and uh, did it that way. So let's see. The skills that you can write books for starts with um, forging technology, which is right here, and then writing. So basically, you want to do forging first so that you can just keep pressing the button over and over again and not have to move your cursor around all the time. It makes it a lot faster. Unfortunately, I already have both writing and kitchen knife myself, so I all of the ones below that, I'm going to have to move the cursor around and take a little more time. But everything above that, if you go in the appropriate order, then, you know, it, it'll be a lot easier. Now, I'm not sure if I'm explaining myself properly, but basically what we want to do is we want to put uh, one point into forging. Now, if we go into item creation, you know, forging is there. Now, if we hadn't learned kitchen knife and somehow we hadn't learned writing yet, we're still doing it, then forging would be first. The next one that will be first is writing. So ideally, I didn't put anything into Kitchen Knife earlier, but I did, so tough. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do them in order, put one point into it with Iria, and then have her write all of the books. You can only hold 20 of each of the books, so I'm gonna you know, t you know, write 20 of them or so, teach them to my characters. You just go into the menu, just like I showed you with the music notation book, and just teach them skills. They'll have a, a correct, um, whatever that is, a sound effect saying that you taught them something up to level seven, and then it'll have the error sound or whatever it is. Once I've done that to all my characters, I will hold seven more of them in my inventory, approximately, depending on you know how good I am at counting and uh, save that for my final character slot. But I'm gonna do pretty much all of this off screen because it's extremely tedious. So again, the order that you wanna learn things in and obviously just one at a time and then go into here and do the item creation, go back, learn another skill, do all of the, uh, the writing for that one, then go back and forth like that. So forging technology. Uh, Let's go out and I'll show you exactly which skills these are. So, forging, writing, uh, performance, which is a musical one, uh, kitchen, and let's see, uh, workmanship right here, and then good eye, which is up here somewhere. There it is. And then Fairy Lore, which is this one. And as you can see, this uses a lot of points. There are some of these books that you won't need to teach to everyone. Pretty much the ones you want to teach to everyone are ones that give you skills. So Workmanship, pretty much, I think this one's required for crafting, if I'm not mistaken. So you'll want that for anyone who's going to do crafting. Um, things like kitchen that have stat increases, you'll want for everybody. 
I guess technically not the mages, but it will help them in the battle arena, so might as well. Uh, let's see, what else? Something like performance. You probably only want that for one person. I'll probably end up giving them to everyone, just make life easy so I don't have to think about it. But anyway. So after fairy lore, the next one is musical notation, which we've already kind of been aware of. And the next one is recipe. And finally we get item lore and mineralogy and psychology, herbal medicine, and biology. In that order. Um, it, it's pretty self-explanatory. Put a point to something lower on and, you know, that's all you want to do for now and then we'll work on more later. Anyway, I'm going to do all of this crap off screen. When I come back, I'm going to have a whole bunch of extra points into skills. This is going to save you on a shit ton of skill points, which you otherwise would not have enough to do all the things that you want to do with your skill points, because you just don't get enough. So anyway, with that being said, I'm going to have fun doing this for the next half an hour, probably more, probably like an hour and a half. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I'm going to because it's, well, it's part of the game and I think it's interesting enough that you kind of want to put those points in there if you have an easy way of doing it. So anyway, with that being said, that's all for this episode and I'll see you guys next time.